Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Are we all still sleeping? We just came from Simbangabi. So we're having breakfast here at home. We came from Simbangabi and looks like everybody's tired and sleepy. That's why they're not greeting me back. Anyway, today we had a very beautiful gospel, right? Um, I'm not reading the gospel anymore today. I mean, because it's a little long anyway. And uh, the commentary might be too long. I have so many things in my head that I want to dump about this particular gospel commentary in today's mass so today was very beautiful we heard about our lady's fiat our lady saying yes to god our lady accepting her vocation the vocation that was prepared for her by god from the very beginning from the very beginning uh, really that started all the way from genesis right when our Lord promised a solution uh, to resolve the sin of Adam and Eve. When our lady, um, sorry, when our Lord said, right, I'll put enmity between you and a woman, between her seed and your seed. That was the promise of a virgin who will be born many centuries later after Adam and Eve and who would bear a son the Son who is Emmanuel, God with us, and who will redeem mankind from sin. And the fulfillment of that promise came through Our Lady and through Our Lady's consent, through her fiat, when she answered her vocation, her God-given and ordained vocation from the very beginning of time, and she said yes to that vocation. She said yes to God. Right? This is what today's gospel reminds us about that yes of our lady but you see what i wanted to talk about today really has to do with that yes that yes and i want to relate that to every other vocational calling that you and i and every one of us have received we all receive a vocation from god every one of us no one is exempted from a vocation a mission that God has ordained for each and every one of us from the very beginning of time. That would be the very purpose, the very reason, the very raison d'etre of our creation. Right? You know, people who uh, are in the personal development space, uh, they love to talk about purpose. They love to talk about mission in life and that we have to discover our purpose, discover our mission. What sometimes they don't realize is that mission and purpose are uh, just the surface. Just the surface. They're touching the surface. There's something a lot deeper than talking about purpose and mission in life. And that deeper reality has to do with vocation. A vocation is something that is God-given. It is not something we invent. It is not something we determine for ourselves. It is not something like a goal that we uh, propose to ourselves. A vocation is God-given. It, it is the very reason for our creation, the very reason for our existence. On top of that vocation, we can propose many other purposes and many other missions for our lives. As we go through life, that purpose, that mission may change. But that vocation that God gives from the very beginning, that vocation, that, that calling from God from the very beginning does not change. That is the stable reality that each and every one of us would have to live up to. And today, in today's gospel, that was what Our Lady answered to when she said yes. She said, fiat, voluntas tua. Eh? Let it be done to me. According to your will, as we say in the Angelus as well, when we pray the Angelus. Right? Now, that brings me to the point of uh, commenting about how we all prepare to receive and answer that vocation that comes from God. If all of us are given that vocation, the question to ask ourselves is, how do we actually respond to that vocation? 
how do we discern that vocation that God wants from us? Be it a vocation to marriage, a vocation to the priesthood, a vocation to religious life, a vocation to even be single for the entire uh, the rest of our lives. Um, the, the question to ask really is, how do we prepare for that and how do we discern that vocation? Because if there is enough preparation if, and if there is enough discernment, then then that yes would be easy to come by. If there is enough discernment, if there's enough prayer that goes into it, if there is enough uh, relationship with God, uh, and we, we uh, ask God all the time about that vocation, and we pray about our vocation, then it would be a little easier to respond to that vocation at the time when we should, at the time when we have to respond to it. So, really the secret about, about uh, uh, saying yes and answering that yes and, and continuing to answer yes to that vocation all throughout our lives is really the preparation part. Okay? And the preparation part really entails discernment and prayer. It entails plenty of discernment and prayer. It entails plenty of hours spent before God, asking God for clarity of that vocation. Okay? That is what we should all do. That is why I find it very funny and really a waste of time and a waste of energies. You know, plenty of these uh, 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 marriage preparation uh, ministries, so-called, that are done in many churches, where couples who are engaged to be married are called to uh, prepare for their marriage uh, a few weeks or a few months before they get married. That is a little too late, a manner of preparation, folks, if you ask me. So those among you who are uh, in this business of uh, parish school of religion, okay, um, I, I'd like to suggest that you, you look deeper into this marriage preparation uh, thing that you do. Because it's really a joke. And, and there's no uh, question why we have plenty of separations, we have plenty of divorces, we have plenty of abortions, we have very small families, and we have uh, couples who don't like to have children. Why? Because they don't understand what marriage is all about. They don't understand their vocation. They don't. They simply don't. And uh, I gather this from a lot of families and a lot of parents and a lot of couples I speak with. And part of the reason that they don't understand their vocation is because they never learned it. They have never been taught. And we are doing a disservice in our churches with something called a cana or a marriage prep or whatever you want to call it, kind of a ministry that does not, does not go in depth in preparing couples to receive and respond to that vocation that God is giving them. And that goes the same thing with priests. Okay, why do we have a scarcity of priests? Why do we have problems with priests? Today, at Mass, today, our dawn Mass, our Simbang Gabi, we had a travesty, a travesty of, uh, of the priesthood. Uh, I don't want to talk about it now, but uh, it was such a disappointment. Many priests don't understand the gravity, the depth of their ministry. They do all sorts of funny things from, uh, from not ministering properly uh, the sacraments that they're supposed to minister to not acting and behaving according to the calling of a priest. Many of our priests are very holy, yet it is sad to note that many of our priests have a lot to work towards as far as that angle of holiness and uh, and and uh, uh, ministering properly to the faithful is concerned. Let us pray for our priests. Our priests are in trouble, folks. Plenty of our priests are in trouble and we cannot hide that fact. We see it every day. We have to pray seriously for our priests in the same manner that we pray for married couples 
And in the same manner, we pray for many families who don't understand what family life is all about, who don't understand what children uh, are all about, who don't understand what marriage are all about. It gives me plenty of grief to have to talk this way so early in the morning at 7 o'clock and right as we are preparing uh, for, our, uh, for Christmas to come in a few days. But today's gospel, the fiat of Our Lady, brings to light all of these problems that are vocational in nature. From priests to bishops to married couples to single people who all need a deeper understanding of their vocational calling. And for the people who prepare them, from our churches to parents who have to prepare their own children to, to face a, a, a life ahead of them, to um, people who are uh, the gurus around town, you know, people who try to prepare other people uh, in, in, in even the most human ways of personal development. Everybody who is in charge somehow of guiding people and guiding souls have a very, very grave responsibility to understand the nature of a vocation and the nature of how this vocation is developed within people and how they are to be lived out for the rest of their lives. I'll leave it at that, folks, for today. Let us engage in a lot more of uh, soul searching, discernment, and prayer. That's what we all need. Let us pray for each other that we live up to our vocations. And let us pray for the others who need plenty of discernment and understanding of the vocations that God has given each and every one of us. Let us ask Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, today as we commemorate that great fiat, which is really the very catalyst that brought us the Christmas that we are about to commemorate. Let's ask her help. She's our mother, and a mother only wants the best for her children. Let us ask her help. Let us ask Our Lady to help us live out our vocation very well and die faithful to that vocation. That's it for us, folks. Thanks for listening. Have a good day. Bye. 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 <laughs>